A few months ago, a Russian university conducted yet another study on the effects of 5G on rats. The results of this study were, as you probably expect, nothing to see here. But there's one little catch. Actually, maybe two little catches. Hi, and welcome back to Scotty's Tech.info. I'm Scotty with my co-host Cletus the Tribble. So the paper that I'm talking about comes from the Tomsk State University in Russia. It is entitled, The Effect of Exposure to RF EMF from the Laboratory Simulator of 5G NR Base Station on Physiological Parameters and Cognitive Abilities of Male Y-Star Rats of Different Ages. Awesome! <laughs> What the heck does that mean? <laughs> In short, what they did is they built a 5G transmitter and they did various tests on Y-star rats. These are a type of rat where when they are exposed to various toxins and stressors, they react physiologically very similar to humans. So Y-star rats are used in experiments for like cancer tests and that sort of thing. So, right, let's take a short peek at what the study actually says here. First of all, the frequency they used was 2.45 gigahertz, and uh, the SAR rating was 0 0.0076 to 0 0.0059 watts per kilo. Uh, pretty low. They explain that later in the paper. Uh, in my opinion, they do actually a pretty darn good job of it. Uh, if you want to know more about how ridiculous and useless SAR ratings are, watch that video. They also note in the beginning of the paper that the IARC, the International Agency for Research on Cancer, conducted a review of published literature and they classified radiofrequency EMF as a possible group 2B carcinogen for humans. Now, in terms of the actual experiments that they did, in short, what they did is three basic types of tests. They did a test for body weight, for organ mass, and they did some cognitive tests. So for body weight, they write that it is an objective measure of health and development in laboratory animals, an indicator of stress and distress, and is used as an objective sign of pain and discomfort. Then they say that organ mass is also one of the most sensitive indicators of toxicity, and its changes often precede morphological changes, i.e., illness. They also took rectal and skin surface temperature tests, and finally they did something known as the Morris water maze, which is it's basically a, a big tub of water, kind of like a swimming pool, and there's a platform that's sort of hidden, and then there's some sort of symbol, like a triangle or a star, and you plop the rats in in various locations, and you record the amount of time it takes them to figure out how to get out of the water onto the, the platform, and right, it's kind of complicated. You can read about that if you want to, but it's a very common test of cognitive functions. So the idea is if they do a really bad job trying to solve this Morris water maze, then their cognitive abilities, their brain is basically messed up. So what are the actual results? Well, uh, their body weight did not show statistically significant differences. Uh, their internal organ mass, no statistically significant differences between the group that was exposed to 5G and the group of rats that was not exposed to 5G. And rectal and skin surface temperature did not show significant differences between the 5G exposed rats and the non-5G exposed rats. So, case closed, right? No. The first interesting thing they note is that for this Morris water maze, they said, yeah, no statistically significant differences between 5G and non-5G, everything's great. But we did notice one little interesting thing, and I quote, An interesting fact is that most episodes of passive swimming took place on the first day of testing. Blah, 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 blah. Some rats, mainly juvenile control rats, maintain this tendency to swim passively in the following days of testing. However, juvenile experimental rats, the ones who were blasted by 5G, rejected passive swimming faster in comparison to the corresponding control rats. This may also indicate that RF EMF contributes to better training of juvenile Wistar rats. In other words, the young rats in the experiment who were exposed to 5G more or less they figured out the Morris water maze faster they learned faster. So you might go, wait, does that mean that exposure to 5G makes us smarter? 
Well, no, not necessarily. It might make rats more easily trainable, which is not necessarily the same thing as smarter. So that's kind of interesting. Then they go on to discuss body weight in more detail. And of course, again, it was found there, was no, there were no statistically significant changes in body weight. However, some differences were still observed. This is actually quite curious. Juvenile rats exposed to 5G showed some peculiarities in feed and water intake during the experiment. Beginning in week three, the young rats who were exposed to 5G started eating one and a half times as much as the other rats. By week five, they were eating up to two and a half times as much, eating and drinking. And they note in the study that, well, basically, we weren't really looking for this. We weren't trying to test for this. So we were kind of surprised, but when we saw it, we started paying attention. And that's when they discovered that the 5G exposed young rats were eating up to two and a half times as much. And of course, the way they discovered is if they were eating two and a half times as much, they were also pooping two and a half times as much. So they had to, instead of cleaning the, the rats' litter boxes, like, you know, every, once a week or whatever, they were having to clean them much more frequently. So they thought this was uh, rather curious. But even more interesting than that is even the 5G exposed rats who ate two and a half times as much food, so they ate like pigs and pooped like elephants, they didn't gain any weight. So their test was doing, their study was of body weight, right? And they, and they said, well, no statistically significant difference. They were eating a ton, they were pooping a ton, but they did not gain any weight. And of course, they have a few proposed explanations for this increase in appetite. The absence of an increase in body weight could be caused by the following mechanisms. Functional disorders could be due to the influence of 5G EMF on the metabolism and transport of neurotransmitters. Uh, sensitivity of neural connections to 5G EMF in the brains of juvenile male rats. And then they note that in our experiments in juvenile rats, the 5G exposed ones had some manifestations of inflammatory processes in the intestine, which were detected during autopsy, and also bloating of the intestines and unformed stools. So they ate like pigs, they pooped like elephants, they didn't gain any weight, but they had inflamed and irritated colons and they were actually having problems with their pooping. Now, of course, for me, the obvious question here is, well, did that stop when the 5G exposure stopped? Well, no, if, if they ended up basically euthanizing and doing autopsies on them, well, then they wouldn't know. But that would be an interesting question to ask. Another interesting question to be asked would be, um, if their colons became diseased as a result of 5G exposure and they started stuffing themselves and going to the bathroom a lot, uh, would that lead to something like rat colon cancer? We don't know. In short, they did a study that checked for changes in body weight, changes in the mass of individual organs, and they did a cognitive test using the water maze. And, of course, this is the kind of study that you would normally do, because scientifically, like, that's how these things go, right? And their conclusions were basically, right, according to these three standardized tests, there's nothing statistically significant here. You can be exposed to 5G or not. You're perfectly fine. But then there was this little interesting thing about the rats eating and their colon. And then, as it turns out, just yesterday, the uh, Russian University... Tomsk State University uh, published a little news report which got covered by various Russian sources. My wife happens to be a linguist and she is studying Russian and uh, so she reads Russian news and she goes, ooh, that's interesting, better send that to the hubby. So I went, ooh, that is interesting. And in this news article, the same group of scientists report that the study showed no outward changes between the rats exposed to the radiation and the control group. Quote, however, a more detailed study of the rat's brain tissue after exposure to the 5G antenna revealed a significant change in the ratio of antioxidants and oxidants. It's still unclear whether the changes will lead to positive or negative changes in the rat's cognitive abilities or if their bodies will somehow compensate, so more studies need to be done. 
Now the reason that I think this is also furiously interesting is because here you have a Russian university and they're doing a study and they use these three standardized tests body weight, organ mass, water maze for cognitive abilities and the rats that are exposed to 5G they pass with flying colors but then they go ah geez you know look how they're pooping like crazy and they're eating like crazy and ooh yeah their intestines are a bit messed up and then this, pu this study was published in May whatever it is, six months later, they come out and they go, oh yeah, and you know what? We discovered changes in the antioxidant levels in their brains, so there was definitely an effect of the 5G on the rat's brains. But we have more studies to do. Now, you can easily see here how scientists can do studies and come to absolutely the wrong conclusions. For example, if this group of Russian scientists did their experiment, and they said, okay, body weight, organ mass, uh, cognitive tests, they all passed. And if they saw that the, some of the rats that were exposed to 5G, the, the young ones, were eating too much, they could just go, ah, yeah, but that could be whatever. And they simply wouldn't have reported it, right? And if they never did autopsies or they found discrepancies in the brain, but they just explained it away, they didn't publish that as part of their paper, they didn't announce it after the fact, you can easily see how the study would actually confirm that 5G is perfectly safe, when in reality, it may not be. This is how science is done, and it's especially done this way when you have vested interests. For example, the telecommunications industry is funding the study to show that 3G, 4G, 5G is perfectly safe, when in fact, it may not be. So what will happen next? I guess we'll find out. Uh, I'm going to pay attention to the authors of this paper and see if they publish anything in the future. So, right. I thought that was pretty darn interesting. For more Techie Tips, see scottystech.info. Thanks for watching. See you next time.